In this video, I'm gonna teach you how to shoot some professional real estate content while using the Zhiyun Crane 4. This is the crane right here, and you see it's got these lights that are actually flashing red on the arms. Now that is to let you know that it's not properly balanced. That's actually a new feature on the Crane 4. But let's go back over to me filming the house so I can talk about how I achieve certain shots while using some different modes that the Crane 4 offers. So the mode that I'm using most when it comes to filming with this is the pan follow mode. So with the pan follow mode, all it's essentially doing is following the movement of the gimbal left and right. So if I'm moving this way, it follows my movement. If I angle the gimbal up or down, it's not actually following any of that movement. For example, pan follow shot, if we come up to the kitchen here, I'm gonna put the 24 to 70 here at 35. And I'm gonna have this in the foreground here just as a little bit of shot blocking. I'm going to do a very slow, subtle shot moving into the kitchen, just while turning. Again, the same thing. I'm gonna use the edge of this post right here. I have it at the beginning of the shot, just to show a little bit more movement. So this is in pan follow mode. You have this little wrist support here, which you can completely adjust by moving this up and down. Just gives you a little support when you're using the gimbal. Like typically, if I disengage that, your wrist is doing all the work here. So just having that there is it's a nice little feature. You also have this grip here, which you can loosen and make longer. And that's fully adjustable as well. So just gives you a few different ways to hold the gimbal to give it a bit more support. Vortex mode is that one where you can spin and get those really interesting looking shots. So I'm gonna use the stairs right here, spinning vortex shot coming down the stairs, but nice and low to the stairs. So it will go like this, but while spinning it. So if I push the joystick, it will start spinning the shot and I can come down slowly. But what I'll also do is go back up because what you can always do is reverse that movement in post. So now we're gonna do a shot looking down so we're gonna spin the gimbal. Oh, this is where that wrist guard's coming in handy. Spin the gimbal. Oh, see, they're gonna be a really interesting shot or just completely useless. Another shot that we can do where we use the lock mode on the gimbal, which is where the gimbal's not taking any movements. No matter what I do, it's gonna stay locked. So we can change to the lock mode. And that can allow us to mimic a slider. So you see right now, I, whatever I do, it's staying locked in that position. Essentially, I'm gonna control it by using the joystick. So you can see at 70 mil there, how you actually get a bit more of an interesting shot. And I shoot everything in 120, because when you shoot in 120, a second can easily become four seconds. So another mode that you can use, if you wanna do less slower movements and more of like the speed ramp style shots is by using the follow mode on the gimbal. So what the follow mode is gonna do is it's gonna allow any input you put up and down, left and right, it's gonna take all of that input and follow your movements. So we're gonna go down into the kitchen as we turn ever so slightly. One more, angle down to reveal the kitchen. Now, if you weren't shooting real estate and maybe you were shooting sports where things are a lot more fast paced, obviously slower style content isn't what you're looking for, but you can actually hold the trigger and engage go mode where the gimbal is just a lot more responsive if you need it to be. And then as soon as you release it, it goes back to its regular setting, whatever you had it on before. Using the corner of this to reveal this room. And we'll go to 35. Oh yeah, that's a nice shot. So we're tapping on the wall in the background there. We're a little bit overexposed. And we're just gonna go to the left. And then in the edit, it'll look like that, but we're doing it in the reverse. We're out there, we're at about 40. Now we'll tap on the background, change to follow mode again, pan down as we're walking in. So when it comes to the settings I'm using with the Zhiyun Crane 4 to get the most stable shots, this is, this is what I'm using. So the most important thing is that you need to calibrate the gimbal when you turn it on with whatever you have balanced on it. You can get to that by going into the settings and the auto calibration screen, you just hit start calibrating. What that's gonna do is it's gonna apply the right amount of torque to the motors so that it's functioning the best way it can possibly function with the setup you have on it. Every time you change the lens, rebalance it, you wanna be running that auto calibration. And then in terms of the parameters, the motor torque, leave that one as is, the auto calibration is gonna take care of that. For the smoothness, I'm always using the high smoothness setting. I want it to be as smooth as I possibly can get it. Follow speed is always slow. I want it to slowly follow my movements. I don't want it to be fast. Joystick speed I have set to quick, because if I do need a quick movement to move it quickly myself, 
I want it to be able to do it nice and fast. I'm rarely using the joystick, but when I need it, it's typically to do something a little bit faster. The dead band, I actually did a whole video on this. This is a really important feature to make sure that you're getting the smoothest shots that you can have. Set it to the highest that you can possibly set it to. What dead band is, is how much movement you can make with the gimbal before it picks up your movement. So if I, you see how I'm moving the gimbal like this? It's not actually really doing anything. It's not taking any of my movements. If I change the dead band to a lower setting, it's gonna be a lot more responsive when I'm making those movements. Now, why is that important to know about? Well, if you're moving around, doing shots or whatever, any little subtle movement that you're making, be it by accident, you don't want the gimbal to be picking up though. So by having a higher dead band setting, it's giving you more flexibility, more play to accidentally make little movements and the gimbal not show it in the footage that you're trying to get. But the camera settings, always slow motion, whether that's 60 or 120, just so that if I'm shooting 120, for example, one second of video can very easily become four seconds of video. Always S-Log3 so I can get the most dynamic range and I'm always using zebras, zebras, to make sure that the stuff I want in the shot, not windows, the stuff I want in the shot is exposed properly and not blown out. You've got four batteries built into this, which means you can run for up to 12 hours and it only takes an hour and 50 minutes to charge because it's charged via power delivery. The handle on the side here is fully adjustable. You can move this around as and when you like to, and then you can loosen it here and you can make it longer if you wanted to. So then if you want to do some lower angle shots, it gives you the option to do that. But it's also just nice to give you a little bit of extra stability. You also have on here a light if you needed to go into an area where it's a little bit darker and this is fully adjustable. So this right now is, that is at 10%. And I've actually got a little diffuser on there which comes in the box as well. This is at 100%. Let's go all the way up, 80, 100. So that's 100%, 3200 lux, 3200 lumens, by color 2700 to 5500. So if you need to change the color temperature, you can. That also has a CRI of 95 plus. To get to the light and to turn it on and off, you just click and hold the dial here turns the light off, turn it back on, turns it back on, and then that's how you adjust it, just by sliding that up and down. One of the other really useful things that this has is Bluetooth shutter control. So I've got it paired over Bluetooth right now with the FX3, and when you see I tap the red button there, it starts recording on the camera itself. Now that aspect is actually fully wireless. You can see I have a cable plugged in there. You don't need that cable plugged in for the Bluetooth shutter control. What that cable is plugged in for is to give you control over this dial right here. So you can set that to your ISO, your aperture, or your shutter speed. So you can see, Janish, if you come in close on the screen there, when I turn that dial, it actually turns the ISO on there as well. So realistically speaking, I actually don't need to touch the camera. I can film and shoot just by start and stop record with the Bluetooth shutter, and then my ISO control on the dial right there. Start in the room and then come backwards around the door, because then you can just reverse that in post instead of having to go around the door and then it might not focus on the bed in time. So what you want in focus is in focus, you reverse it in post, it's just easier. We're gonna use these beautiful chairs here to do a little bit of shot blocking. We're gonna go into 70. And we're gonna just reveal the bed here ever so slowly. This handle is actually useful for lower angle shots. Definitely gotta get this bathroom because it's beautiful. Tough thing with this bathroom is the mirror. The mirror is right in the shot, so we're going to go to pan follow mode. Uh, oh, sorry, just follow, and then I can angle down like that, revealing that sink just from the edge of the door. So it's a little bit overexposed. I'm going to go just like that. The shot is actually going to be that way, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on the tap first, actually going a bit more, and then we use the edge of that door and then we'll reverse that in post. There might only be a second of that that I use, but because it's slow motion, we can slow it right down. Let's try and show a little bit of this lobby, but through the kitchen. Kitchen is in focus, the oven specifically. And now I can, there we go. So we're kind of shooting through the stairs and everything that's going on here. If you want to quickly move the gimbal, you can just move it to the angle you want it, hold it there and it will stay, so that can be pretty useful too. Try and reveal the lobby now, because we're really high up. You don't typically get to be this high up and see the front door in a house. So 70, focus on the door. He's in the corner of this wall right here, and you can still see the door. Tap on the door to focus it, and then come around ever so slightly. There we go. Now I'm gonna do the same thing, just wider. Just 
give it a couple of different perspectives. We'll go back so slightly. Okay. This bathroom will be an easy one to shoot because there's less mirrors. We're going to go down to like sink level. Uh, we've got too much light. We're going to focus on the front sink here. It's going to come back. With bedrooms, for this style of video, I'll normally go with ones that stand out a little bit more. I do quite like the way that this one looks with all the plants here. So we'll use this, which I'm assuming is an office. So just going backwards, slowly revealing everything out the door. Perfect. Okay, double tap to return the gimbal to its setting or center location. Now this gimbal actually does have a way to balance it in portrait mode or vertical mode as well. I'll show you how to do that now. Really easy to do it. So on the back of the gimbal right here, you just loosen this little bit right here. Loosen that and then hold this button right here and then you can take that off like so. So that whole plate comes off there. Very simple then, this arm right here, literally just slide this on like that. Lock it and then you just go ahead and balance it the regular way that you balance a gimbal. Now let me show you how to actually balance the gimbal, but we'll do it in the regular horizontal way. So the flashing lights on the axes of the gimbals let us know that the gimbal isn't balanced properly. So I'm gonna show you how to balance this gimbal properly and the lights will hopefully go from being flashing red to white. Now I've put the gimbal to sleep. You can do that by pushing and holding the button on the side just here. You don't have to turn it off to balance it. Now obviously now it is completely out of whack, it's not properly balanced. So let me show you how I would go ahead and balance this. Now I've got an A7R5 on here in a little cage. It will balance way more than that. It will balance an FX6, C70. But the average person isn't using those cameras, they're using an FX3 or an A7S3 or an A7R5 like I am right here. So the first axes I would typically do is the axes right here, the tilt axes as June lets us know there. So unlock that axis and uh, lock off this axis right here just to make it a little bit easier and we'll lock off this one here as well. So we're just playing with the tilt axis here. So you see right now that it's falling this way, which means that I need to bring it back this way. So we're gonna do that by loosening the little lever right here and we're gonna pull it back until it no longer tilts one way. So now it's going the other way, it went a little bit too far. That's almost perfect. We'll go back a tiny little bit I'm of uh, movement. The thing with balancing gimbals is it's all about little movements. You don't want to do big drastic movements because that's where you go from being balanced one direction to the other direction. So now you can see that that is in fact balanced properly that way. So now what I'll do is I will go so it's like this and you see how it's falling backwards now. What I need to do now is adjust on the side just here. So we'll turn this around so you can see. So now I'm adjusting this right here. So it's falling backwards. I'm going to loosen this off where it says lock and I'm gonna slide it ever so slightly forwards until it is in the middle. Now it's too far forwards, we're gonna go back. See how there, that's perfect. Now we'll lock that one off, and now it should stay in whichever position I put it. That means it's balanced on that axis. Let's slip it back around. Uh, now we're gonna lock this one off, and we are going to unlock this one right here. And you'll see now it's falling that direction, that means it's it's falling that way, we need to put it back the other way. So we're gonna do that by loosening this lever right here and we're just gonna feed that arm through a little bit so that it no longer falls the one way. So let's push it back this way a little bit, a bit too much, back the other way, and that's perfect. So now we can lock that off, lock that axis. So these two are now completely balanced. So then the final axis you need to balance is this one right here, which is lockable and unlockable right here. So unlock that, and the way you test and see if this is balanced is you turn it from side to side, and it spins a lot there because it's really not balanced at all. And we loosen the lever right here, and we're gonna bring this back a little bit, and then we're gonna see how much that affected it. So, oh, there you go. So you see now how it's not spinning at all? That means it is actually balanced properly. So now if we unlock everything, and this one, this one's already unlocked because I just balanced it. Uh, and we take it out of sleep mode by pushing and holding this button right here again. It will awake and you'll now see that all of the axes are in fact white, which means they're balanced. And you can actually test it by clicking on the little balance on the touch screen there. And it's gonna do a little test for you and see if it is in fact actually balanced. And now you can see we're white there we're white here, which means the gimbal is properly balanced. So those lights are really useful just to let you know that, hey, you may be not balanced properly, do it again. As well as that 
being able to balance it in the vertical mode it actually has a portrait mode. So you can actually film with this in portrait as well without having to rebalance it. So you can see now, like that's how you could, if you wanted to, you could still film portrait to get your Instagram reels, your TikTok content, whatever, without actually having to rebalance it. So that's quite useful as well. So let's shoot something that's vertical right now, just to show that. We'll show a reveal coming into this bedroom, coming back. So I got that without even having to rebalance the gimbal. So that's using the portrait mode, which is right at the bottom of all the modes there. So this is a nice shot because you're seeing the movement kind of walking into the open concept space, but you're also seeing this quite close up to the edge of the frame here. So it just gives it a lot of movement. And I quite like that. I'm going to do a, like one of my own cells of vortex shots here. So put the gimbal up high like this and I'm gonna push left on the joystick as I bring it down. So for the exterior, we're at 24, nice wide shot here. We're gonna walk in slowly. Perfect. The number. Oh, there's a nice sun flare there. Look at that one. There you go, look at that. Come backwards. Always looking for those sun flares. So that's how I shot this beautiful house with the Crane 4. If you want to see the full video that I gave to the realtor who graciously allowed me to shoot this house, I'll pop that at the end of the video. But now I want to talk about the like, real talk, some thoughts about using the Crane 4. Some aspects that are good, it does well, and potentially areas for improvement. The arms are nice and big, so you can balance pretty heavy setups on there. The motors pick up the slack very, very well. I was using the 24 to 70, so I typically balance it in the middle because the lens obviously extends the barrel there. So when it's extended, it's a little bit off. When it's retracted, it's a little bit off. The motors pick up the slack, no issue, like every other gimbal does, so can't complain there. You saw all the shots that I showed you. They look completely on par with everything else I typically shoot. So it did a really good job in that respect. I like that there's that little portrait mode in there as well. That really allows you to quickly get those vertical content style shots if you need those without having to take it off and rebalance it. But it's nice that it has that option to take it off and rebalance it as well. If you actually wanna just shoot everything vertical. It's also very easy to use. Like I didn't read the manual. You can turn it on and figure out how to use it. Touch screen is very intuitive. If you don't know how to do something, you can just kind of figure it out by tapping around in the menus there. So that's obviously nice too. My three areas that I would say are potentially where it potentially has room for improvement would be the screen. It's a little bit too small for my liking. The touch screen works well, but the back button specifically when you're in the menus, I would tap it and sometimes tap an actual menu instead, like an option, because it's just a little bit too small. Maybe I just have fat fingers, I don't know, but I would like to see a bit of a bigger touch screen on future models, just so you don't have or run into those issues like I did. The other thing I'm not a huge fan of would be the plate. You have to use their custom plate. Now, you can obviously mount your own plate to the top of this, but that raises the center of gravity, which then limits the payloads that you can carry because it's a little bit higher. So you do have to use theirs. I would like to see more of a universal style plate on future models, something like Arca Swiss that we can just quickly take off and put back on without having to use their custom plate because then when I want to use one of my tripods or something like that, I have to change the plate over and it's just, I don't like that. I want everything to just be the same. The big one for me, I'm left-handed. This is not a left-handed gimbal. It's only designed for right-handed people because of this joystick right here. Works great from using my right hand, which I can do, and it was okay. I'm ambidextrous, I guess, when it comes to using gimbals. Figured it out. But if you want to use your left hand, you can't. My thumb there, which is how I'd control the joystick, there's no way to do it. So it is entirely designed for right-handed people. I'd love this joystick to just be somewhere more central, so it doesn't matter if you are left or right-handed. So that is that. If you're interested in the Crane 4, I will pop a link down below for you. Thank you for watching this video. Let's roll the final video, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.